Hi everybody, I'm Lee. Um, I'm senior system architect at Big Door, which means I get to do all the designy, buildy stuff in the background. Um, I thought I'd come and talk to you guys today and tell you why exactly we love Python. Uh, it took me some time to actually be able to uh, whittle this down because there are so many reasons. But first and foremost, Python is clear and concise. It's extremely versatile and it has an amazing community. And I'm gonna dig into all of those points right now. So by clear and concise, um, one of the first things that uh, the inventor of Python realized when he was uh, trying to invent a new programming language was that Python uh, programming languages are generally read more than they're written. So designing a programming language for readability means that uh, you can go ahead and write some code, come back to it in a year, and you can understand it very easily. Not only that, anyone in your team can come and understand Python really easily. So um, a little tiny example here, it's a little bit dark, um, but we've got, let's say we're handling an HTTP request. We have a list of allowed methods. The method of this particular request and then the line that I really want to point out here is if request method not in allowed methods, do something. Now, you can see that line, that if statement, is virtually English. You can almost understand that without understanding a programming language. And that is very prevalent throughout Python uh, in general. Um, it's also consistent, which along with readability um, means that it's, it's very powerful. What I mean by consistent, um, let's say you have an iterator. Now these things are anything that is a collection of multiple items that you can go through a sequence of one by one. Um, now at the top we have a list, here we have a tuple, and then a dictionary, and then this whole other mess of code which is a class, which is an iterable. Those things don't actually matter. What matters is the highlighted statement here. For i in iterable print i. It doesn't matter what type of iterable you have, it will always behave the same way. And you'll see this throughout the language. There's lots of talk of file-like objects. Things that act in a certain way, how you expect them to act, they'll always act that way throughout the Python stack. Uh, another cool thing which I love is the Zen of Python built into the language itself uh, a bunch of statements which really apply to anyone's programming language. Uh, you know, beautiful is better than ugly. Explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex. The fact that this is baked straight into the language and you can get to this without installing anything else, this Zen of Python, I think is brilliant. Um, it just kind of shows the core tenets of how the language was designed. So, I also mentioned that Python was versatile. It's very versatile. You can use it for so many things. Uh, the list up here is by no means exhaustive, but you can see the very varied uses you can use for, for Python. You've got system scripting, web applications, everyone know, has heard of Django. Uh, game development, if you've ever heard of EVE Online, that is 100% a Python application, both front and back end. Um, embedded systems, computer graphics, industrial light and magic use Python to, to render stuff like, uh, you know, all of the animated movies. Uh, we use Python in the background for our API. We have a custom AWS, dash, AWS dashboard that we use. Uh, all our virtual machine management at Big Door, our log processing and BI systems, and our release tools, they're all built in Python. So the great thing about Python being versatile is that when you are a Python developer, you are also versatile. If you are a top tier web application developer, you're gonna be pretty good at writing system scripts in the same language. Another big thing, that, and in fact, in my opinion, the biggest thing that is great about Python is the community. It's a batteries included language, so when you install Python, you get a whole host of things in the standard library that let you do anything from connect to sockets to build a, uh, an HTTP server, SMTP server, you name it, it's in there. It really is batteries included. 
the core language is open source. So if you want to get your hands dirty and start implementing features for Python, you can. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. The documentation is amazing. So if you go to python.org and go and look up anything to do with the standard library, um, it's there, documented in full. Boop, boop, and boop, 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 boop. <laughs> so it's there, okay, documentation, local user groups, they're amazing as well. Very active one in Seattle called CPIG. And of course, PyCon. It's easily, hands down, the best user conference I've been to. Um, we'll skip the learning more Python. You can find lots of resources online. So does anyone have any questions about how we use Python? I, I can answer the first one right now. We are hiring, yes, absolutely. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. I, I neglect to, uh, to go over that. Big Door, we, uh, we provide loyalty programs. Uh, loyalty programs and campaigns for enterprise businesses. So you've pr you may have seen our stuff around. Um, we've got quite a few uh, implementations out there with Starbucks and Microsoft, um, Pepsi, a number of places like that. So yeah, loyalty, we build it for your, for your company. Any other questions at all? Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Um, we obviously, our, our platform runs in the browser, so there's a lot of JavaScript there as well. But uh, I would say once you get from the, from the JavaScript front end, it's 90% Python from the web application server all the way back to all of our processing systems. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we'd love to move to Python 3. As soon as all of the libraries that we depend on uh, have moved to Python 3, then we will definitely, we'll be the first to jump there. Um, unfortunately, that's not happened yet. Yes, sir. Great question. Um, Python isn't great at, I mean, I've not yet come up against a problem that I couldn't solve with Python in a reasonable way. Um, obviously, when you start getting down into the real deep depths of Python, you have the things like uh, the global interpreter lock, which can help, which can prevent uh, multi, uh, highly threaded programs from working on a single processor with multiple cores. But there are ways of working around that even as well. You've got libraries such as multiprocessing, which let you spawn off a new process to get around that. Um, as I say, I've not come up against a problem so far that I couldn't crack with Python. But that's not to say that there aren't better solutions for very specific use cases. One more question, one more question. Uh, well, since uh, Facebook and Twitter opened offices here, then, you know, fa uh, Python talent's kind of dried up magnificently. Um, <laughs> so it's really just a case of, I don't know, I don't know what we need to do to fix that, but we just, we need more people learning Python. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for Big Door.